Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, I would like to personally invite you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and activate your notification bell while you are at it because I am not a super regular uploader, meaning I do not upload on the same exact day every single week. I may go a couple of weeks and not upload and then have a ton of time between real estate transactions and then I'll get a lot of videos done. So if you have your notifications set to all, you will know the next time I upload and you won't have to keep coming back to my channel and checking to see if I've uploaded. With all that being said, uh, again, welcome in. I had put a question out there on the community tab here on YouTube, on my community tab, and ask you guys if you wanted to see my celebrity fragrances collection. And you guys unanimously said that you did. So I wanted to go ahead and pull all these fragrances together. It took me quite a while to pull these together. I would say a little over a week because I kept finding fragrances, kept finding fragrances. So I think I have around 50. So this video is not going to be my usual format where I go deep into the notes and take like a deep dive into the fragrance. This is just going to be a a uh, quick thoughts type of video and move it on to the next one because if I didn't, if I went into each and every one of these, this would probably end up being like a part two and three type video series. And I know some of you guys probably would enjoy that, but I wanted to do this one a little bit different and just get all the fragrances out there. And in the comment section below, if you guys want to see me just do a video on, let's say, my Paris Hilton fragrances or my Britney Spears fragrances. Let me know down in the comment section below and I can do just a entire video dedicated to just these fragrances. But for now, we're going to keep it moving and I have actually grouped these fragrances by celebrity so that it's not so chaotic. Um, I think I've done a decent job of of kind of grouping these together. So let's go ahead and get started and see how far we can get with all 50 fragrances. I'm not sure that I have exactly 50, so don't hold me to it, but I think I have close to 50. Um, I'll put the names on the screen as I go through these, but I'm probably not going to be linking anything down in the description box because that would take 30 forevers. So if you have any questions about anything I've listed, like maybe where to get the fragrance or whatever, just drop me a note down in the comments section. Um, or you can also email me at thecuriousperfumer at gmail.com. But I want to go ahead and get started before this video gets crazy long. This is already three minutes into this or three and a half. So um, the first set of fragrances I have are by Paris Hilton. And I have quite a few. I had more than I realized, of course. Um, and the first one I have is a little mini. I'm even including these little minis because some of these have a decent amount of fragrance in them. Uh, this one is called Eris, and this is probably one of my, uh, wouldn't say it's my most favorite Paris Hilton fragrance, but I have long loved this fragrance just because it is uplifting. It is almost an effervescent type of fragrance. I would best describe this one as smelling like, almost like a fruit punch with some champagne mixed in with a little bit of bubble gum. So it just keeps it fun. This is a, a very good everyday type of scent, just out of the shower scent, great for spring and summer, really good all year round. This is almost one of those fragrances that you can wear if you have a job that tells you you are not supposed to wear fragrances. Um, because it does smell like the herbal essences, uh, type of, um, shampoo. So again, that is Eris by Paris Hilton. This one's about $18 online. I got mine at TJ Maxx for less than that. So the next one I have is by Paris Hilton. Of course, this one is just called Can Can. And this is another little bitty tiny mini bottle I have here. I think I picked these up in a set. I think I got this one and I got this Eris and I got maybe one or two more and I don't know where those are. I probably used them up. This one was released not long after Eris, I believe. 
and it's another fruity floral fragrance but i get more floral here than i do fruity um and it's it's kind of it's in the same vein as eris um but again it's more floral there are some like wild orchid and orange blossom and some amber in here so it's a little bit deeper than the than the eris but again when i say it's kind of like it i mean it's mass appealing it's not going to be something that you spray that you're just super super turned off on most likely um but yeah that one is a good one the next one i have is electrify by paris hilton this one was released in 2019 and i am not fond of this one whatsoever i bought this hoping that the juice inside would reflect the bottle but it does not it smells nothing like this bottle at all um it is described as an amber floral and once it sprayed once i sprayed this i just thought whoa that is just not this is just not my type of fragrance this one has a little bit of a metallic smell coming from either those top ozonic notes or maybe from these vintage florals that are in here i'm not sure but even though the notes on fragrantica and on some other websites i've looked at do not list white musk in here i feel like it's in here because it's so metallic or maybe it's metallic on me um really no sweetness in here at all and it's not really an ambery scent it's not really a sweet scent it's it's best described to me as a vintage type of floral so it looks it smells nothing like what this bottle looks like and it absolutely does not smell like anything that i would imagine paris hilton coming out with it smells nothing like any of her other fragrances to me it does list coconut in here so i know there's a lot of lovers of coconut out there this has really no detectable coconut in it at all to me so just bear that in mind when you're looking at that one the next one is dazzle and this one is probably one of my most favorites um, by paris hilton this one has a, a definite sour cherry note in here it also has some violet so it pulls that it pulls that makeupy lipsticky vibe and if you have not seen my top 20 fragrances that smell like lipstick slash makeup i'll put the link to it up here so you can click it and go back and watch it but uh, i did include this one in there because it barely makes it it this one is not super lipsticky or super makeupy because it's not super powdery to me but because it does have the violet in here and it does have the sour cherry it is lending that lipsticky type of vibe it's not that synthetic to me i know a lot of people say that it really pulls synthetic to them but uh, fortunately the sour cherry in here does not pull very synthetic and i think this is a very this is a very good fragrance for the price i highly recommend this so this is probably my favorite one in her whole lineup the next one is this older fragrance and it's just called paris hilton i need to look up and see if this is her actual original perfume i know this one was released back in the early 2000s it kind of has that early 2000s uh smell to me this one definitely reminds me of the herbal essences shampoo if you are into uh shampoo type fragrances this is totally it but i'll go a step further if you have seen any of my videos here lately i would say in the past six months i have talked about a brand called yzy and they have a fragrance called white point and it smells like this but it's sweeter this one is not super sweet to me it's more floral than anything like that shampooy floral smell so if you are more into a shampooy vibe that is sweeter the white point is probably more what you're looking for and i love it i found myself spraying it a lot this past spring and summer and i just loved it i loved it a lot the next one i have is this uh gold rush and i also have rose rush i did have platinum rush with this but it broke you know how that little indentation is in the packaging that you get that plastic packaging these three were laying down in there and as i was kind of prying it out it was kind of hard to get out of the package as i was prying it out i broke off 
the top here from the bottom. I didn't know I was pulling that hard, but obviously I was. Uh, so it broke, unfortunately. So I do not have Platinum Rush in my collection, but I'm going to go, like I said, I'm going to go look at Walmart and CVS and some of these other places that have these little gift sets this time of year at Christmas. And if they have another one of these, I'm definitely going to pick it up because I want to have a complete collection of these. These are so adorable. Um, like I said, this is Gold Rush and this is Rosé Rush. I'm not fond of Rosé Rush because this is pure... This is just a straight up rose scent. I don't even know what you could mix with this to make it even better or any better. I might say um, I'm just not a rose fan. If you like vintage rose type fragrances, the Rose Rush might be for you. Um, the Gold Rush, the thing that stands out the most in here for me is the dry down. It has praline and vanilla. And it is a, a little bit powdery type of scent with a little bit of floral, but then it just dries down, like I said, to that praline and vanilla. I think that is all of the Paris Hilton fragrances that I have for now. If I find any more while I'm doing this video, I will certainly bring them, uh, bring them in, but I think that's all for now for that. So um, the next one I think I'm going to talk about is the Madonna fragrances. I have this one called, I have two by her. I have Truth or Dare. And this is a discontinued scent for sure. This one does last a long time. Unlike most celebrity fragrances, uh, this one has very good staying power and projection. It is a strong, very, very realistic tuberose scent. I would put this tuberose up next to uh, niche quality tuberose scents. This is... Uh, this is one of the most, this is probably the most well done celebrity fragrance that I have ever smelled like quality wise. This bottle is probably about five or six years old and it smells identical to the day I purchased it, which tells me that the ingredients used are probably a little bit higher than uh, average for a celebrity fragrance. Um, I would put this Truth or Dare up next to my Alexander McQueen that comes in the black bottle that was very expensive when I bought it. Um, so yeah, it, it's pretty, there's several notes in there, but this is pretty much just a straight up tuberose scent. The other one I have is probably talked about quite a bit in the fragrance community. This one is uh, Truth or Dare Naked. It is the polar opposite of the white floral of the regular Truth or Dare. This one is getting very, very difficult to find. Again, discontinued. Um, Siage is not that great with this one, um, but longevity is decent. I would say a good three to four hours on me. It is a very pretty, ambery fragrance, beautiful fall fragrance, winter fragrance. It is sultry. Um, it is ambery. It is benzoin, has benzoin type qualities to it. This one actually lists cacao in it, and I do get a slight chocolate vibe from it, but mainly I just get a really, really dark, resinous, ambery type of fragrance, and it is beautiful. This is a beautiful fragrance, and I've used a good little bit of it. I'm trying not to save it because you really shouldn't save your perfume. Um, the way I look at it, if you wake up in the morning, you know, that's a day to celebrate. So go ahead and just wear whatever you want to wear. I think we should all be in that kind of frame of mind. Um, but that's just me. The next one that I have is, the next set I have is by Kim Kardashian or KKW. And the first one I have is this Crystal Gardenia. This one, you guys, I don't know if I've talked about this one much on my channel, but I've had it quite a while. This is the most realistic gardenia fragrance that I own. This one smells almost identical to the gardenia blooms that I smell on my gardenia bushes in the front of my house. Very realistic. Very, very realistic fragrance. It is a sweet gardenia. It is beautiful absolutely beautiful. If you own this, you need no other gardenia fragrances. This is it. And I think this is the only gardenia fragrance that I own, but it is beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. The next one I have is True Reflection. 
not reflections. I think I've said the S before, but this is true reflection. And this one is by um, Kim Kardashian. This one to me is a bit like the OG Jimmy Choo, but where that one has pear, I believe, as a top note or a main note, this one has plum. So this one is much deeper and much richer, but it still has patchouli in the base. So if you are not a fan of that Jimmy Choo um, dry down with the patchouli in there, um, that one probably is not going to work out for you, but definitely give it a try. I love it. I have the body spray in that True Reflection and I love it. I love the perfume and I also really, really love the body spray. I think I like the body mist body spray more than the, um, more than the perfume. The other one I have is Beyonce Heat and this one is definitely a beautiful amber fragrance. I should have put this one in my uh, fall roundup and if I do an amber themed video, which I probably will, I will probably add this to it because this is a very feminine, very alluring, um, not super sweet fragrance, but definitely amber heavy. Uh, leans a little bit vintage actually, and you can kind of smell that peach when you first spray it. Um, not much powderiness due to the almond. I don't really get the almond or the macaroon. But definitely, you can definitely get the amber. The amber is coming through big time. So if you are a fan of amber fragrances, that is definitely an amber fragrance. The next one I have is Adam Levine for women. I actually have this little bottle and I actually have a big bottle that I have not even opened yet. These came in a set for like $8 at my local TJ Maxx. Um, I know a lot of people talk about these and the only thing that I can possibly add to what others have said is... I definitely agree with everyone else who has said this definitely smells more expensive than it is. Um, this is definitely an androgynous fragrance. It definitely smells like a Middle Eastern type of scent to me because it does have the spices and the saffron up top. And if you are familiar with a lot of the Middle Eastern fragrances, they have a lot of spicy and saffron accords and vibes in there. But once you get past that, the star of the show on this one is sandalwood. It is a beautiful fragrance. I would say definitely a beautiful fragrance for fall and winter. Again, I could have put this one in my fall and winter roundup, but I only had so much time to do that video, so I just couldn't put everything in there. But if I were to do another one, I could definitely include that one into another fall roundup. The next one I have, and I don't know why I skipped and went straight into the Adam Levine, but I did, I guess because it was just sitting here. But the next one I have is by KKW Fragrances Essential Nudes. This one is Nude Sand. Very pretty little presentation here, but this is very, very dusty. If you are not familiar with the Ambrette note, um, this one is it's like a dusty, musty, has a dry quality to it. There's not much sweetness to this at all. It's very powdery. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about this one. This is one of those your skin scents, but better. And most people either love that or they hate it. The next group of fragrances that I wanted to talk about are the Sarah Jessica Parker fragrances that I have in my collection. The first one I have is NYC Crush. And this is just a coconut, vanilla, white flowers type of fragrance. The packaging is hideous. I really can't stand this packaging. I wish they could just, wish I just had a cap and I would just like set the bottle out here somewhere and not have this packaging. But I have a love-hate relationship with this. When I first got this, this reminded me of some type of car freshener maybe. Um, but the more it has sit around and the more I've come back around to it, I am now liking this once again. It is a very linear fragrance. It is, you know, you get what you get when you spray it. It's a, you know, it's a coconutty vanilla white flower type of fragrance. Just a simple scent. It's not milky. It's kind of musky. It's not salty. It's not too beachy. It definitely does not smell like sunscreen and it's very, very affordable. The other one I have is just the NYC, and this one, 
This one is just a uh, just a primarily a strawberry focused frag fragrance. Although the mandarin is listed in this one, the strawberry is the main note here. There are other notes and accords listed here, but this one is a little bit hard for me to um, appreciate because it is a very, very synthetic strawberry scent. Um, but I know that one has a huge following, so we will leave it be. And another one that I have is the Sarah Jessica Parker Stash. This one is also extremely unisex slash androgynous. You can, anyone can wear this. This is another one that I could put in another fall and winter roundup. Um, it is a very ambery, again, a resinous type of benzoin, more benzoin than some of these others that I've talked about. There is not much floral going on here at all, even though I do believe there is uh, a couple of floral notes listed. There's no floral going on here to me at all. This is basically a black pepper, um, sage, cedary, woody, resinous type of fragrance. So definitely not a blind buy, safe blind buy by any means. And when I compare it to Boyfriend, somebody had mentioned that Stash and Boyfriend kind of smell the same. I don't think so. I think Boyfriend is, Boyfriend is not as woody and it's a little bit sweeter. Um, both are along that same vein of being ambery and spicy and all that. But to me, Boyfriend is, Boyfriend is just amazing. I just recently got this. I've never, I never smelled this one until this year. I don't know why. I have no clue, but I love it. I absolutely love it. I don't know what the original smelled like. Um, everybody says it smelled pretty much the same as the reformulation, but I never got my hands on the old bottle, so I have no idea. Uh, the next one I have is Sarah Jessica Parker Stash Privé. This one smells nothing like stat, the regular stash. This is this one has a lot of notes in here, but there's really no direction with this one. It's very linear. It's very, very fruity up top and no real direction after that. There's really no staying power with this one. Definitely no projection. Um, basically just a, you know, just a generic fruity skin scent. The next one by Sarah Jessica Parker is called Lovely You. And this is one of those, another one of those, your skin but better, like skin scent type of fragrances. There is a big musk note here. And it's, it's actually a base note, but it comes through when you first spray it because it's so prominent. It's a very pretty fragrance. Um, like I said, a pretty everyday fragrance. There's not much else going on in here to me. It's just a musky, a musky fragrance, just a pretty musky fragrance, but you have to get through that initial blast of alcohol with this one. But once you get past that, like I said, it's just a musky type of fragrance. Now let's talk about all the Britney Spears fragrances that I have in my collection. I have quite a few and most of these I have are flankers of fantasy. So we're going to go get through these pretty quick. Um, the first one that I have is fantasy intense. This kind of reminds me of what the original fantasy smelled like. The original fantasy came back in, uh, came out in the early 2000s. Um, the notes on this one are a little different than the regular fantasy these days. But oh my God, do I love this one. I love this any time of year. It is less powdery to me than regular fantasy and it definitely has more kiwi in it. And I do get more cupcake from this one and white chocolate with this one. Definitely, definitely a guilty pleasure. The next one is Midnight Fantasy. It smells nothing like what the bottle looks like. This one is, it looks like this would be very dark and very thick or whatever, but this is very inoffensive. It's very light. It's very fruity. It's heavy on the plum and heavy on the berries, but it's not a dark fragrance whatsoever. The next one is Intimate Fantasy. This probably is my second favorite of the ones that she has. 
This is a creamy, fluffy vanilla with brown sugar fragrance with like a hint of lemon. It does not smell like Lyra to me. So if, if that kind of triggered your memory banks to think, oh, that kind of smells like, that kind of sounds like that would smell like Lyra. It doesn't smell exactly like Lyra, but it kind of smells like what a um, lemon cupcake icing would smell like. And then I have Festive Fantasy. This one is very, very fruity. And this one dries down to her typical sweet, sugary DNA that most all of her fantasy fragrances has. This has dewberry, sour cherry, and plum up top. And I do not get many florals from this. Um, I do enjoy this one because I do get the, the, the cherry note here and I do love the cherry in this one. The next one I have is Rainbow Fantasy and this one has lime up top and it dries down to like this cotton candy type of smell. This one is absolutely delicious. I probably should be wearing this one a lot more. Um, gosh, out of all of her fragrances, out of all of these fantasy flankers, it really is hard to name like which ones that would be number one or whatever. This one is amazing. I love the cotton candy. You can actually smell the cotton candy on dry down. And then I have prerogative. I don't have many. I just have this one prerogative here. I know there's some flankers of this one. Um, but I got this one because of the coffee note in here. And to me, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this smells like a dessert in a bottle. It smells like tiramisu. I get a chocolate vibe with this too, but there's no chocolate listed. And then Private Show is another one that has the coffee note. This one has coffee and it also has um, a whipped cream note in it as well. This one's kind of getting hard to find too. This one would have to be um, another one of my favorites. VIP Private Show. This one is a, this one is a very, very intensely fruity fragrance that dries down to even more fruity vibes. It does have just a dash of violet in it, so it kind of borderlines on those lipsticky makeup type, uh, makeup type of scents. Um, it does have amber in the base with some woody notes, but I, you guys, this one has blood orange, it has mango, so anything with mango, I love it. This one's beautiful in the summertime, completely opposite of the um, regular private show. The VIP private show is, like I said, it's completely different. Totally on the different, different end of the spectrum. And then we have the Britney Spears Believe. This one is so different than anything she has ever come out with. This one has often been compared with like the Aura Fragrance by Terry Mugler, and I can kind of see that a little bit. Um, it has a fruity uh, opening with lime in the middle with a heavy, heavy patchouli and praline amber base. So if you are not a fan of patchouli whatsoever, or if you do not like the Aura Fragrance by Terry Mugler, this one probably is going to be a no-go for you. And if you can tell, I have a shelf back here that is completely empty because this general area is where I keep my celebrity fragrances and I do keep a lot of them in the drawers back here, but I came in here and wiped this uh, area completely out. So if that bugs you, don't look at that. Um, the next one I have is Rogue by Rihanna. I tend to pick up on the cyclamen note in here, which is a very vintage -y type of fragrance. Vintage notes that really bug me are carnation, uh, hyacinth, cyclamen, um, aldehydes. They all scream vintage to me. And um, I really do not like those notes or accords. So this one is really vintage to me for whatever reason. I know this is well loved by a lot of people, but to me, I sort of feel like this one is a little bit polarizing. Um, I'm not saying I dislike it, but I'm not saying I'm in love with it either. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the Jennifer Lopez fragrances I have in my collection. The first one is one of my all-time favorites. It's called Miami Glow. And what a classic. It just smells like warm skin. 
maybe like you've been in the sun all day laying by the pool and your skin has like this slight coconut smell but not exactly sunscreen it just smells like warm skin and i know that's crazy and it might sound a little gross um but that's exactly what this smells like and i really don't get any of the florals that are listed in here even though it lists cycl cyclamen as well i do get um coconut milk I do get vanilla. The heliotrope is definitely there. It's a very fluffy, light fragrance that is perfect for summer. I cannot think of a better summer fragrance than JLo Miami Glow. The next one I have is Steel by Jennifer Lopez. And this is just a beautiful, uncomplicated tea fragrance. It has the Earl Grey tea note in it with the citruses. I just sprayed it. It is a very clean, energizing, uplifting fragrance. Like if you get out of the shower and spray this, you are just going to amplify the cleanness, if you will, that you have when you get out of the shower. If you need some energy throughout your day, I just sprayed this and I automatically feel like I have a little bit more energy than I had before I sprayed it. Just a beautiful, um, energetic Zen quality to it. Then we have M by Mariah Carey, probably one of the most interesting celebrity fragrances that I own. I have talked about this one a good bit on my channel, so I won't go too deep into it, but it's just a salty marshmallow fragrance that starts out a salty. It starts out kind of weird, but it turns into an amber patchouli fragrance. Not a safe blind buy at all, but I do love it. It's, it is a bit strange though, so just know that it's not for everyone. And then the other one I have by Mariah Carey is Luscious Pink. This one has Bellini in it. It also has um, Tierra Flower. It has Sandalwood, Sea Note. So this is also a, a little bit of a salty fragrance. This one is beautiful in the summertime. It just screams summertime to me with that Bellini and those... Uh, citrusy notes along with the tiara flower. Beautiful, beautiful summer fragrance. Definitely would wear it in the summer. Then we have Selena Gomez. This is just, uh, just a Selena Gomez on it. Um, Eau de Parfum. So a lot of people say this smells like Victoria's Secret Love Spell, but I just get like a sweet, tropical, chocolatey, musky vanilla scent that is is somewhat similar to love spell but to me it's not interchangeable with love spell i do love this fragrance though i think it is very very pretty the bottle is a little weird i know the bottle bothers some people but i don't know i think it's kind of cute the next one is by lionel richie and it is just simply called hello I picked this one up at my local TJ Maxx, and this one definitely smells far more expensive than it sells for. I think I bought this one for like $11. This is a tonka bean and jasmine fragrance, and then it has that ambroxan down at the base. So I love me a good ambroxan base, and this one definitely has it. This one, if you can get your hands on it, I think, I think most people would like this if they like those notes. I have smelled something that smells like this. I just can't put my finger on it. I may have to go into Fragrantica and see what people are saying about this one, but this one definitely, I definitely love this fragrance. You do pick up on the honey and the dry down on this one. Um, so it's a, a little bit of a complex scent. It starts out kind of fruity a little bit, and then it goes into the jasmine. You get off whiffs of jasmine, and then you get the tonka bean that's so creamy and then the honey, and then the patchouli, the ambroxan. I'm telling you, it is just, it's intoxicating. Next one is a well-loved fragrance, and this is Jessica Simpson Fancy. This is, I mean, to be honest, when I first smelled this years ago, I thought it was a mess. It was a powdery, fruity, just super sweet mess to me, but the longer this has sat in my collection or... Maybe it's me. Maybe I've changed. This has quickly become one of my most favorite fragrances in this kind of fragrance. It's like an ambery, ambery caramel fragrance. So if you are into ambery caramel fragrances, this is your girl. 
very, very gorgeous, delicious fragrance. I think it is a beautiful, beautiful fall and winter fragrance. As the fragrance has aged, the top notes don't seem to be as prominent as they once were, and that probably has something to do with why I'm liking it now, because the top notes were, they felt almost misplaced, like they were not supposed to be there um, when you compared them to the mid notes and the, and the dry down. So as the top notes probably have faded somewhat with this bottle, this bottle is probably six or seven years old. Uh, all I really get with this one now are the, uh, the caramel, the almond, the vanilla, and the amber, and a little bit of sandalwood, and it is gorgeous. This is a gorgeous fragrance. The next one I have is called I Fancy You, and I have no idea why it's still in the box. Uh, this one is, this one's a beautiful fragrance, but I would reserve this one more for the spring and summer. This one has a big, big red apple note up top. Um, basically, apple, pear, and a dry down of musk and sandalwood is what you have with this one. Uh, I do get some decent longevity with the Jessica Simpson Fancy, but not with the I Fancy You. I don't get a whole lot of longevity with this one. And reversing just a little bit, most all of the Britney Spears fantasy ones, they all have about the same longevity, about two to three hours, and it's basically a skin scent. The next one I have by Jessica Simpson is called Fancy Forever, and this one starts out with a big lychee note in here, which is a almost a sour, sour, sweet, tropical type fruit. I do love this one, though. The blackberry in here is prominent, and you do get that creamy tonka bean. Not much musk in this one, but the vanilla keeps it kind of sweet. The vanilla keeps everything just kind of mellow and not too, too fruity. Definitely a, um, this one definitely could be a transition fragrance. I could see someone wearing this one from spring and summer into early fall. Just a beautiful fragrance. I don't think this one would be very offensive to anyone either. The next one is Stella McCartney Pop, and the tomato leaf note in this one tends to freak a lot of people out, but honestly, it's just a green note. All of the notes combined tend to lend a plastic type quality to this fragrance somehow, and some even relate this fragrance to like a doll head smell. I get that doll head smell to an extent, but not like some of the other fragrances that I have that tend to really lend a prominent plastic note like the Mucolot by Montal. That one really, really gives me a plastic doll head type of note. That one actually made my Halloween fragrances video for a creepy, uh, creepy doll head fragrance. My Ari fragrances that I have, Ariana Grande, I have Sweet Like Candy, and this one is basically like candy. It has a very prominent blackberry note up top, and then you get whipped cream, you get marshmallow, you get vanilla, uh, you get a little bit of floral, you get a little bit of tropical notes with that frangipani. It is just a very fun fragrance for just about any age group. And then I have Moonlight by Ariana Grande. This one has a prominent plum and black currant note in it. And it also has the marshmallow and vanilla in it as well. This one's a little deeper though, because it does have amber in the base. And then I have three travel sprays by Ariana Grande. The first one is going to be um, Cloud. I think we all know about Cloud. Um, Cloud is... Ariana Grande Cloud has that um, uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 DNA that I'm a little bit uh, over right now, so I'm not really enjoying that fragrance. Uh, the other one that I have is, the next one I have is the Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. This one has pear, it has raspberry, coconut, it has macaroon. I can definitely pick up on the macaroon in this one. And then I also have... The next one I have is Ariana Grande's R.E.M. or R.E.M. 
And this is probably one of the most favorites, most favorite ones of hers that I have, just because it has that salty fig lavender combo that is just addicting. I, I didn't really like it at first, but I have really, really come around to it. I really, really love that fragrance. I love a beautiful take on lavender and this lavender is just really well done. I love this lavender. The next one I have is a travel spray of Eilish by Billie Eilish and this reminds me of Sweet Like Candy to an extent. This one kind of borderlines into home fragrance to me. Like I could see a candle being made out of this. I think it would be just delicious. As a fragrance though, you guys, it is so, so super sweet. It's probably best layered with other fragrances. If you are not a fan of the super sweetness of that one, you could probably cut the sweetness with another fragrance. Maybe something with some lavender in it or something that is a little bit more astringent. Definitely get the cacao in here. Lots and lots of sugar, lots of vanilla. This is almost like the baking, uh, the baking quality vanilla. Just a very pretty, pretty scent. I don't think for me personally, it's going to be full bottle worthy because it is just so, so super sweet. But I will work my way through this travel size and see where it lands me. The next one is Pitbull Woman by Pitbull. And this entire composition is based around a candied apple note. And it's resting on a bed of mature flowers and musk is all I can tell you about this one. It is not one of my favorite fragrances. I have smelled better apple fragrances than this, but this one is okay. The next is by Sofia Vergara. I'm moving into hers now. I think I have three of hers. This one is called Love, and this one is so, so, so much like the um, Black Opium scent. This one has a prominent coffee note in it. Um, it has the almost the same florals that Black Opium has. It also has praline in the dry down. It is just one of those fragrances that is absolutely beautiful. If you don't want to spend the money on YSL Black Opium, you may want to see if you can pick up a bottle of this one instead. And then we have just regular Sophia by Sophia Vergara. And this one to me is very, very much like Coco Mademoiselle. It's just a tad bit sweeter and a tad bit darker, but it has the same DNA as Coco Mademoiselle to me. The next one I have is Lost in Paradise by Sofia Vergara. And this one is just a little hit or miss for me. This one opens up with a almost a pungent, sweet, bubblegummy type of fragrance. Juicy fruit, kind of those chewy fruit candy kind of scents. I really don't get any apple with this one though, even though apple is listed. I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but this is just a extremely fruity fragrance that, again, really has no direction. It, it almost kind of smells cheap um, or generic smelling. So I would definitely think to use this one up, I would definitely have to mix this with something as well. Maybe layer it over a lotion to give it some depth. Almost to the end here, you guys. The next one I have is by Lady Gaga, and this is Ode de Gaga, and this one is definitely androgynous. Um, this one has a strong lime top note that uh, lasts longer, way longer than most top notes do. I also detect a black tea note in here, even though there is no black tea note listed on any website that I can find. Um, but I do smell leather, so if you are not into leather, I feel like that you will struggle with this one. It is an odd bird. When you start out with lime and you end up with leather, it's a little different. But um, And I do think this leans, even though I do think it is unisex or androgynous, I do think this one does lean more masculine. Uh, another one that I found out here that I think I missed is this Betsy Johnson. I haven't had this one too long. Uh, this one is in a strange shaped bottle and I even had someone to comment that said this one actually looks like a, um, one of those things that you blow bubbles with. Like if you were to, like a bubble wand, like if you dipped it into the bubbles and then made the bubbles with it, that's what this looks like. 
Although this fragrance is not bubbly at all. This fragrance actually smells like the original Juicy Couture to me. So um, nothing really groundbreaking here. And then the last one I have, I don't know why I almost missed this one, but this is Katy Perry's Indie. And this is definitely um, one of those Your Skin But Better scents. Again, I'm going to have to make a video of those because I have quite a few. Um, but this one has white tea in it. It also has five types of musk in it. It has regular musk, white musk, black musk, Egyptian musk, and island musk. Uh, it also has tonka bean and amber in the base. Really all I get with this is the plum and the um, white tea, and then I get a very musky base. So if this is something uh, that sounds interesting to you, then you could go ahead and pick this one up. I think this one is still widely available and not very expensive either. But I will definitely be doing a your skin, your skin but better type of video because I have come to realize I have quite a few of those. And that is all of my celebrity fragrances, you guys. This video, again, turned out way longer than I wanted it to, but I did get through every single one of my celebrity fragrances. So let me know in the comment section below which ones of these you own, which ones maybe you have that I don't have and let me know some of your uh, favorites down below. Like I said, if you want me to do a dedicated video to any of the groups of these fragrances, just drop it down in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.